In this tutorial, we're going to talk about how Java's anonymous inner classes can be used to handle events inside of Android Studio. But before we do that, let's have a brief look at a more traditional way of handling events inside of Android Studio. And here I have a class set up with a button click listener and an on click method. And what happens here is that each time the button gets pressed, the word buttons pressed is displayed on a text box on the display. So let's just have a quick look at that. When I press the submit button, the words button pressed show up in the text box. So what's wrong with this type of an arrangement? Well, the biggest issue is that this code uh, it's not so easy to see that all this code is somehow tied to this button that's described in the button click list. So what we would prefer to have is a single piece of code that's all bundled together that would contain the initialization code for the button as well as the code that's run every time the button is pressed. How might we do this? Well one thing we could do is we could create a completely separate class and an object to handle the button. To do that, we could come over here to the uh, Java files, and we could go to the main activity and create a new Java file that would sit alongside here. Now let's call that uh, my event handler like this. Okay, and now I could start moving some of the button handling uh, functionality from here into this other method. So here I've started to move a lot of the button handling code into this separate class. I've implemented onClickListener in the event handler now instead of in the main class. And I've moved the onClick method here, uh, which handles what happens when the button actually gets pressed. And what happens back in the main activity class now is much simpler, because all I have to do is create this event handler object and pass the event handler object to the set on click listener method specifying that the event handler object now is going to handle all the actions associated with the button. What are the advantages and disadvantages of such an approach? Well I've cleaned up the main activity to be much simpler now and I've segregated all the event handling for the button to a separate class. The overhead though is pretty significant because now I have a completely separate class and a separate file for an object that's only going to be used in one place. Is there some way we could get the best of both worlds? Could we get a separate class and an object to handle the button, but at the same time not have to create a completely separate file and be able to define everything all that we want in this one space right here? That's where the use of Java's anonymous inner classes comes in. Before I show you how anonymous inner class is constructed, we need first to talk about some definitions. What does anonymous mean with respect to the Java programming language? Let's have a look at a simple example. Here I've created a class called dog. It's a simple class with no methods or variables inside of it. And inside the main method I have decided to create an array with three dogs in it. Here's one way I can create the array. I can create each dog individually, giving them a variable name. So this would be dog A, this is dog B, and dog C. Then I create the array of the dog pointers, and I assign the variables to each of the pointers. So this is an example of a non-anonymous dog array, because each of the dogs has a variable name. But there's another way I could create a similar type of array. Here we see that the dog constructors are being called without being given variable names. In fact, I'm calling the dog constructors here and immediately putting the dogs into the array initialization. So this is an example of an the use of anonymous objects in Java. Okay, the, the objects are anonymous because unlike this example up here, these dogs do not have variable names associated with them. And that is an example of how the term anonymous is used in the Java programming language. Now let's talk a little bit what we mean by the word inner, once again with respect to Java. If we look at these two loops here, 
one is nested inside the other, we would say that this for loop with the j is the inner loop, and this for loop with the i is the outer loop. Similarly, we can nest classes in Java. Now normally the rule in Java is that we have a single class per file, but there are some rare exceptions to this where we may want to define one class inside of another class if we want to contain the class and no other class is going to use that inner class except for this particular outer class. We might want to just have a quick and dirty second class in here. So in some instances, it might be worthwhile to create a second class inside the first. And we see that this actually would compile. However, uh, this is not the syntax that we're going to be using for Java's anonymous inner classes. Now let's finally look at the proper syntax for constructing an anonymous inner class in Java. New view dot on click listener. And now I'm going to be required to implement this onClick method, which is a requirement of this interface. So when I implement a, uh, a Java inner class, what has to be here in terms of the constructor has to uh, represent either an abstract base class or an interface. In this case, it happens to be an interface. And this is the required method for the interface. And I'm going to put my toast message back in here. OK, I've inserted the toast message. Now, it's a little hard to understand exactly what's happening here. So let's just look at this for a second. Between this open parentheses and this close parentheses, what I need in here is an object that implements the onclick listener interface. And so what I've done here is I've created a class and an object all in one fell swoop, and the required method for this interface uh, is represented by this onclick method right here. It's all intertwined in here. And so what's nice about this is that the button handling and the code for the button handling is all tightly woven here into this one piece of code. And so there's no separation between the onClick method and the button listener as there was in the first example. And uh, it's quite clear now that uh, when we press the button, that this is the code that's going to execute to handle it. Now let's try out our brand new uh, anonymous inner class from Java and make sure that this works. OK, so I'm going to press the button. And you can see that the button press message still comes up, just like it did before. This anonymous inner class is going to be the code structure that's going to be preferred when we handle events inside our Android Studio projects. One last thing I want to show you, though, is that this uh, code structure can be further simplified one more time. If I hit this little minus sign here, I can collapse it into something known as a lambda expression. Lambda expressions were introduced into the Java programming language during version 8. We'll talk more about Lambda expressions as we get further into the course, but you need not be concerned if this confuses you. In order to go back, you can just hover over the Lambda expression. You can see that it'll expand back to the anonymous inner class. Alternatively, if you click on this little plus sign here, you can go back and forth between the Lambda expression and the Java anonymous inner class.